notice that I have the thought that um, if I stay in this state of mind that feels more like mind, that I'll feel so disoriented and so disinterested. But that I won't be, I guess that I won't be used or that I won't be of any help. Or, and then I think, well, then who is that I? that would be used or be of help. And I look at it, you know. So, again, we want to keep, we want to make this practical. The reason I brought this in is, again, it's great underpinning. You know, it really gives us a sense of what's going on. And it's kind of, it's the best way to come at it now is to say, do what Mary was saying initially. Well, you've got to start with some of your substitutions, with some of your perceptions or some of the things that you're wrestling with more at the surface and then work it down. You know, it's, it's not like necessarily reading this passage, you know, that there's this perfect clarity now. It's like, ah, oh, I don't have any problems. I just made one substitution. I now choose to Correction for that substitution, and that's that. the end of the, the intensive this week, that's the end of my struggle with my career, my struggle with all these relationships, you know. I you, quit the world, <laughs> that's it. Right, I've just <laughs> stepped out of the world. I mean, you, you have to be really, have a sincere intention to do this. Mm -hmm. And you may even have doubts coming up where it's like, oh, gosh, this seems mm -hmm. to be a bit much. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, those are good to take a look at, too, because... That's what the ego mm -hmm. would would have interpret this would be like an ego interpretation would be like yeah that's overwhelming mm -hmm. that's throw in the towel you know mm -hmm. just give in to it to this complexity and to this maze and and that's our purpose now is to join together and take a look and come back to God and not deny the projections but go deeper into where we've made substitutions and adjustments and yes and where we're projecting which is a lot about what we've been going through that. Okay. And to help remind each other mm -hmm. that it is possible, right. that it's not an overwhelming. Right. My artwork for the day. Oh, Calvin, and I, Calvin, Calvin and I are busy. Yeah. We are busy. He was, in the, he was in the main command chair today, so I worked out on the side. But but it was it kind of looks like a flower. But actually, mm -hmm. I thought, well, I would draw the very center. I would just draw God at the very center. And then I, I said, well, closest to God would be the right mind. So I drew my little right mind out there. And then out of that, I said, I drew these little specks that seemed to go out like funnels, you know, where it was just this little teeny dark spot, and it seemed, seemed to go out into a funnel. And I thought, well, I'll put, my, put the projected distorted world out here. But the reason I put these little gaps in here and made these little funnels with some spaces in it is that the Course is teaching that everyone who believes they're here has a private world, and that private world is not shared. You know, everybody, you may think that you're seeing the same world. We could, you know, one could go around and say, well, let's look at this room. Everybody, what color is this carpet, or what color are these shoes? Are they blue? Are they purple? Red? Black? How many, you know, think they're black? You know, again, it seems like there's some agreement. And that's what makes this world so sneaky. But the Course is teaching very clearly that the world you're perceiving is a private world. You people that, you put all the characters out there, just like in nighttime dreams, you know, we talk about when someone goes to sleep and they dream all these, there's all these characters and interactions and it's all just generated from the mind. Well, he says it's the same with your daytime dream. Everything that you perceive in this world is just as generated from your, from your own mind. You're just seeing a private world that has no overlap. Um, there is a place in the Course where we talked about it pretty specifically that might be helpful. 
and it begins. Is it 231? Yeah, it right starts on that. page around 230. Mm -hmm. I think we'll we'll start on the page before. Okay, so this is chapter 13, and it's section five, the two emotions. Yeah. He's talking about love and fear, and then when he, again, just like the section we just read on fear, he, now he's this is a little bit earlier in the text, but he's the same theme. Um, he, we'll pick it up with the other has many forms, which is the uh, at least the third sentence of that section, the two emotions. And he's talking about fear. The other has many forms, but the content of individual illusions differs greatly. Yet they have one thing in common. They are all insane. They are made of sights that are not seen and sounds that are not heard. They make up a private world that cannot be shared, for they are meaningful only to their maker, and so they have no meaning at all. In this world, their maker moves alone, for he, only he perceives them. Each one peoples his world with figures from his individual past, and it is because of this that private worlds do differ. Yet the figures that he sees were never real, for they are made up only of his reactions to his brothers and do not include their reactions to him. Now, it's pretty deep again, but it's kind of like saying, whenever you're upset with your brother, you're just you're just seeing one of your own attack thoughts projected out there. You're seeing a behavior. If you think of your brother as a lazy slob, then you believe in the concept of lazy slob and you're seeing it acted out and thinking that there's somebody else that's a lazy slob and you may think mm -hmm. that this shadow figure is neat and orderly mm -hmm. in contrast <laughs> better <laughs> in other words there still seems to be that so again it's not seeing the full it's almost like seeing a, a hologram or an image that's been projected out and you're not really seeing the whole you're just seeing half of half of it, you know, seeing what's behind it. Therefore he does not see he made them, and that they are not whole. For these figures have no witnesses, being perceived in one separate mind only. So that would be like in, in this, each each little one here has peopled his whole world with figures, including this figure. This seems to be the subject of this private world, and all those other figures, ants, and dogs, and cats, and deer, and mice, and, and rocks, and trees, and galaxies, and moons, and suns, and black holes, and all this and that, those are all projected out of this, of this one mind. Now it seems, I, I put a bunch of them around there because that's the way it seems to be. It really seems to be that, that there's all these different ones. But in a sense, if you really stand back from this, this is just all dark. Well, the white part is the gap, mm -hmm. right, between the private world. Yeah. yeah it's what just, looks like flower petals. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just meant to, to be a representation of that. That yeah. separates them. Right. Another thing you could look at is you could look at the, the petals that seem to extend out from the right mind. And Jesus not only says in here that private worlds can't be shared, but he says only the thoughts of God can be shared. So you could even look at the white petals in that sense as kind of like true communication in a sense that, that that's, that's communication with the Holy Spirit just extending out with, with the right mind. There's no darkness in true communication. That's why the purpose of every relationship we have is to lay aside all of the investment in bodies mm -hmm. and to really see our brother as a mind. Get rid of the dark corners and the unforgiveness. Yes before we can become a teacher of God. Yeah. And as long as, as long as the mind is paying attention and really buying what the body's eyes are seeing and hearing, then it seems like an impossible task. Mm -hmm. How can I forgive that person? They raped my daughter, or they, they murdered my father, or they stole and robbed my grandmother, or they, they, they attacked me, <laughs> or whatever like that. It seems to be beyond forgiveness. But again, what the Course is teaching us is that's the shadow figures. You know, you made it up that way. You looked for, you believed you were guilty, you looked for witnesses of guilt, bingo! 
found they, them. They were given to you, not in truth, mm-hmm. but in illusion. And what the world teaches is your projections are absolutely true and that you have every reason not to forgive that person. <laughs> yes. And you're absolutely right to have that. And if you smile through it, you are insane. Put that person away, you know. Pollyanna. Pollyanna. That's right. You're in the aisle. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the world's interpretation of Pollyanna. Mm-hmm. Pollyanna just didn't criticize mm-hmm. and judge. And the world's interpretation, now it's become a word. Huh. I mean, you're a Pollyanna. That's Pollyanna. Right. That's yeah. pie in the sky, you know. That's wishful, mm-hmm. wishful thinking. Yeah. It is wishful. I think I'm still not clear, though. Do we see bodies and just project on them what we want to see, or, or are we all not really here? This is just a figment of my imagination. Am I, am it's the I second clear? thing that you said. That. Right. Okay. Not like, That's what not I like, thought it was saying, but I... Yeah, it seems pretty drastic, <laughs> yeah, because exactly. again, it's like a lot of times people will say, well, bodies are bodies, and it's what you're, the meaning you're giving to them, but, but it's the judgments that made the bodies. In other words, it's the bodies and all the fragmented world is just the outpicturing of the insane thoughts. And of course, in the end, when you give up the insane thinking, <laughs> the world disappears too. Which so what are you seeing, David? Nothing? Well, what I see, yes. is, again, it reminds me of this place back in the teacher's manual where he, the way I experience it now, I've had some light episodes occasionally where the, the figure grounds, everything starts to collapse, you know, the depth perception starts to collapse, and then everything just starts to light up, and even the, the edges where the background seems to be just starts to light up and everything gets very light. And, you know, the Course talks about those even in the workbook as light episodes. But he says, as you're going along, you will have light episodes. Don't be frightened by those. You know, again, here's our, our master teacher has, has, has traveled this road before. So he's not, he's just left Did behind. Did everybody will? Like a roadmap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he talks about light episodes that, that will be yeah, frequent. I think it's in Lesson 13, maybe. It is in one of the lessons, but it's... Yeah. But there's a lesson that says you should be like yeah. to look for and, it. And generally what I what I see again is it's it, it's described in the teacher's manual where it says the body's eyes will still see differences, but the healed mind will put them all into one category. They are unreal. It's kind of like a stepping stone kind of a thing where you still seem to see differences with the body's eyes. You still seem to hear differences with the body's ears. But Instead of having all these different categories and believing the reality of them, you know, you if you follow the metaphysics, you start to see, ah, ha, ah, ah, they all are, they all go into one category, and therefore there's a great lightness and joy and defenselessness that comes with that. Now, what we were going over with the movie last night was the ego doesn't want there to be this one box in the mind that everything's unreal. It wants that to to be covered over, and it wants the mind to believe that the split is on the screen, that they aren't all in one category, that there really are good guys and bad guys, victims, victimizers, um, you know, we, we talked about a lot of them after the movie last night, and, and we, I kept saying the key is not to buy, not to buy the bait, and not to split it up, and as soon as you make that split, and you see somebody is being taken advantage of, and somebody else is the one who's doing the, the taking advantage, then that's buying the bait. And they, they certainly wouldn't then be both unreal. One seems to be dominating another. And that would just mean that, that, that you believe in the split and you don't have that single box. That's kind of how. And what's being described is like the end point. You know, it's like you, you still have to bring it back to, okay, well that sounds all well and fine, but where am I? If I, if this sounds like we were talking about earlier, for it sounds like, hey, you're, this is a fairy tale, <laughs> or whatever, or, then I have to start where I am, and, and there's, and the Course says, yes, don't pretend to be something you're not, or pretend to understand something you don't, or pretend to not feel something.